It is a February in the middle of the winter in eastern Finland. We are going to do ice diving where we use cave diving techniques and methods. All the cave divers in the whole world are using the same kind of Hokartian rigging. It is very simple, effective and streamlined. Now we have already dressed up our gears, so we can go on to the lake where we have already done two separate holes to the ice. First ice hole is for descent and another is for ascent for exiting away under ice. Pekka is putting his fins on and he is ready for dive. Sharp Razor put his fins on and he is also ready to start penetration. Old rowing boat is now wrecked on the bottom of the lake. We have already put the permanent main lines to the lake. We have done hundreds of dives on that lake, but we haven't seen ever before bikes in the middle of the winter. At the summertime there are lots of bikes on the shallow water, especially between July and August. This bike seems to have a big belly. Bikes are coming to the shallow water right after the ice has melted. Normally that happened in middle of May, so it's going to take two and a half month time until that happened. That time they put the row to the water and after a few weeks there will be a lot of new little baby bikes. One of the basic rules in cave diving is use always a continual guideline when you are diving in overhead environment, like under ice, caves and mines. With that line, cave divers can find their way back home even in sealed out situation when the visibility can go for zero. We have put arrows to the permanent main line to show the right direction for exit. Those arrows are staying there as long as the main line is placed. Nobody can't move or take those arrows away. Now Sharp is making the jump to another main line. He is putting the arrow to the main line to show the direction of exit. He takes his jump reel from the D-ring of his waist and put the double ender to the D-ring of his chest. Sharp put the line around his arrow because of two reasons. First, when the line is around the arrow, divers can easily recognize the right direction of exit even in zero visibility. Second of all, if there would be some other cave divers diving at the same time, they wouldn't be disorientated of the shortest way of exit because there might be also several ice holes for exit. Another basic rule of cave diving is that nobody don't touch or move someone else personal markers like arrows and cookies and jump rails. Now Sharp make the lock to the jump rail with his double ender and twist the spool twice around the main line. He put the double ender to showing the direction of the dive. After that he put the cookie to the jump line to show the direction of exit. Now they can find their way back home even in zero visibility and their personal markers and jump line doesn't disorientate other cave divers to wrong direction. Here is end of the main line, where the depth is 18 meter, which is about 60 feet.
now we are coming back to the jump rail. First, Sharp put his cookie back on place. Second, he disconnects the jump rail of the main line and put his double ender to the D-ring of his chest. After that, he dived back to another main line and put his jump rail back to his D-ring to the waist. Now he has to take only his arrow away from the main line and put it back on place. Sharp make round circular with his diving stroke to his body for showing that everything is alright. After that he is pointing the direction of the dive. Cape divers are always having at least one little spool on the D-ring on the waist. It's called safety reel and it's for the emergency situations if divers lost the main line or another diver. There is about 50 meter which is 150 feet line on that safety reel. Safety reel has to be much smaller size than primary reel because it can take too big a place around your body. Jump spool is exactly the same looking like a safety reel, but often it can have a line only 30 meter, which is 90 feet. Cape divers take underwater only as many jump spools as necessary, nothing less and nothing more. On that dive we used gas management for rule 1 of 3rd. We were ready to stop penetration and turn around after some of us have used 1 of 3rd of our gas. We used only one of fourth of our gases, which was UDG. It is universal diverse gas, which contains 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. Length of the penetration was 600 meter, which is 1,800 feet. Maximum depth was 18 meter, which is 60 feet. Average depth was 5.5 meter, which is about 17 feet. Dive time was 1 hour and 10 minutes. Our gas consumption was 20 liter in minute. Air temperature was minus 6 Celsius, which is 21 Fahrenheit. And water temperature was 0 Celsius, which is 33 Fahrenheit.